Power Tracks presents the most powerful sport on earth, the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Power Tracks is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. Hey, but I believe this young man's under a lot of pressure. Hometown, first national championship. We talked with the owner a moment ago, and he said, at being ever Jasmer, he said, I'm going to let the kid drive the truck the way he did on tour last year. And you know when he took off, he dominated the circuit. So he kind of chilled out. He's laying back. Quick qualifying time I look for from the USA 1. Let's just see what can happen. And the two previous winners here in St. Paul, Minnesota, Andy Brass, a new driver of Bigfoot, and Steve Dane and Awesome Kong, they're both here again tonight. Well, Bob Chandler of Bigfoot fame brought Brass from California for one purpose put the Ford back in the winner's circle to beat this Chevrolet for the Renegade National Points. He's shown that he can do it. What can you say about the kid out of Texas? Wow, he ended 1988 with four straight wins. He's already had one win under his belt in 89. He's picking up where he left off. Watch the kid from the Lone Star State and Awesome Kong. So can Rod Litzow win before the hometown folk? We'll find out as first round competition gets underway next on Power Tracks and ESPN. And welcome back to Power Track, St. Paul, Minnesota, near blizzard condition outdoors. But Army, it's going to warm up real quickly indoors. 11 of the finest monster trucks in the world, side by side racing. What are you looking for tonight in the action? I'm looking for a hometown boy to kind of redeem himself. He won a national championship. We're talking about Rod Letzow, the USA won ever Jasmine truck. He won that championship, but he lost the handle on the combination it took to win. We're going to be watching him real close. And Richard, this kid's under a whole lot of pressure. Everybody knows he can win. He's capable of it. He just hasn't put the right combination together. Speaking of Everett Jasmer, there's the man behind the truck. We're going to be watching him all evening long. All right, uh, Army, let's take a look at the pairings. How they're going to race. USA 1 was our top qualifier at 6.19 seconds. He'll get a bye run. Then it's Dave Wysork and Nightlife taking on Bill Jones and Rebels Revenge. Following that, we'll have Doug Spanier and Master of Disaster right here from Minnesota taking on the Flying Texan, Steve Dane and Awesome Kong. Then it's Mike Gresh and Barely Tame against Mark Wheeler and the Terra Duster. Al Spencer and Gentleman out of Indianapolis goes to the line against Jeff Zimmerman and the Madman. And then we've got Steve Combs and Night Stalker taking on Andy Brass and Bigfoot, one of our previous winners here in uh, Minnesota. Well, a hometown boy would love to take a win out. The gentleman that designed the truck right there, Everett Jasmer. He is the man that designed this suspension. The truck has really worked great at the end of the year. It dominated the sport. However, they lost the handle. They're trying to pull it back in now. You can see from the earlier qualifying shot, the potential is with the truck. Notice how it actually attacks the track. Comes out. Watch him when he nails a final jump of cars. There's your quick qualifying shot, Richard. Well, going up high on that doesn't really affect Rod Litzow. He is a former motorcycle hill climber, and he used to be on the gymnastics team back in high school, so he's used to getting up and bouncing around a lot. Uh, nothing new to him as we get ready for our first pair of side-by-side -side racing. Dave Wysork, Nightlife, 1987 Chevrolet out of Nebraska, taking on Bill Jones, Rebels Revenge. He is out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Bill drives a 1986 Chevy. Well, now, Bill used to be a motocross racer himself. Sure What's was. unique about this vehicle? It's a Chevrolet, but it's powered by Chrysler. Meanwhile, Wysori sits on the left side. I want you to notice Wysori driving south. Head out the window, Richard. He likes to look at it. He says he has to watch the left front wheel. No problem with the nightlife out of Nebraska. He's going to the next round. All right, so Dave moves on. Meanwhile, Bill moves home, and we're going to move trackside in just a moment. Dave's got to be pretty happy with the run and the nightlife machine. Well, the truck looking real good on that round. Are you going to make any adjustments for the next round of competition? I don't think so. I'm going to keep her the same. Track's a little rough. The car's getting pretty beat. So I think we're just going to try and do the best we can with what we have. Go from there. Good enough. Good luck to you. Thank you. Well, Army, are you ready for the flying Texan? We've seen him go through the air many a times. Here he goes. Steve Dane, awesome Kong out of Killeen, Texas. He's going to be facing a dandy in Doug Spanier, the master of disaster. Doug is out of Albany, Minnesota, not far from St. Paul. He drives a 1989 Chevrolet. Of course, Steve also in a Chevrolet. Well, Doug Spanier believes this truck could be a competitor for the national championship. It's brand new. The only thing that Doug needs in the master of disaster is actually time in the seat, Richard. Speaking of time in the seat, the thrill seat in the sport has got to be the one that sets up with awesome calm. You call him with the Texas Air Force. I think he's the captain of the Texas Air Force. You're going to see why. Master Disaster leads with him. Now keep an eye on Awesome. Wow. There he goes. 
the Flying Texans, Steve Dane. Awesome ball gets another win under his belt. And I'll tell you what, Army, I don't know what the key is that he uses, but it seems like he always gets a slow start at the starting gate. And then he powers coming across the second set of junk cars. If you watch him at half track, he came off the first set of cars behind. He goes into the second set way out in front. And look at all the air this young man gets. He attacks them, Richard. That's all you can say. Steve Dane, the 28-year-old out of Colleen, Texas, with another win. And, of course, you already know by now, he is the only Renegades monster truck driver to ever win four events in a row. He did that back in October and November of last year gets another one in st paul let's go track side army's got steve now well in the pit area steve said i was up there wasn't i yeah i guarantee you were up there it seems it's almost like a rubber band the harder you go the faster it runs and it's not leaving the start line real hard but man you're getting some horsepower and air on the finish line in well it ends up uh i don't believe it's my training that's bad i got a torque converter going away and i'm not getting with it until the thing starts rolling i ain't building up pressure or something so i i'm trying out of the hole i don't want to blow the motor up and when I get rolling, it catches up, and then I get all kinds of speed, but it's on the other half of the track, and that makes it that makes me fly so far. Well, we've got more monsters coming up on Power Tracks. And we are about halfway through opening round competition on this Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge, and facing each other next will be Mike Gresh, and the barely tamed Ford, that's a 1979 Ford. Mike is out of Albany, Minnesota. He's going to be facing Mark Wheeler, the Terra Duster from Aurora, Nebraska. It's a 79 Plymouth powered by a 360 small block Mopar engine army. And we do not see Plymouth very often on the circuit. No, the Plymouth truck, you just don't find that many of them. Meanwhile, Mike, we're going to talk about him for a minute. Barely tamed. I think you need to keep an eye on this kid. He's an up-and-comer in this sport. He'll be working the left lane for all the Ford fans. The kill boxes are in. Alan Goss gives him a go-ahead with the green light. Look at the run. Left lane Ford dominating this round, Richard. Easy win for Mike Gresh and Barely Tame, a former snowmobile racer. He moves indoors to the sport of monster truck racing, his first full year on the circuit. He's going to move on into further competition. And we're going to move along into more side-by-side -side racing. Coming out first is Al Spencer out of Indianapolis, Indiana. That is Gentle Ben. It's 1977 Chevrolet. He's taking on Jeff Zimmerman out of Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. And the Madman, this is the 79 Dodge Army that is owned by Kid Raring, uh, a guy that's well-known on the monster circuit. Well, the Dodge will be working the right lane, Richard. That gives the Chrysler fans something to cheer about. But coming off that left lane will be the Indianapolis base Chevrolet. Gentlemen, oh, we've got some problems. The slow start in the left lane. And we've got smoke starting to come out. Looks like some type of problem with the Dodge Power vehicle, but he'll take the win anyway. He has got a lot of smoke coming out. Jeff Zimmerman, mad man. The Dodge gets the win, but he also gets some big-time mechanical problems. Any idea, Army? Well, Richard, we're going to run down and check it out. I don't believe it was engine problem. It looks more like steam indicating some type of a water problem with the particular engine. All right, Jeff Zimmerman, mad man, gets the win. We're going to go trackside to find out what's wrong with that Dodge here in just a moment as Army's working its way over to the truck now. The run looked extremely good, but what exactly happened? All of a sudden, all kind of smoke and steam came out. Uh, part of the blower belt uh, left go and busted both my radiator hoses. You gonna be able to get back in competition? We're trying. We're trying. Good luck to you. We'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Well, let's hope that Steve is able to make it back as we get ready for our final first round race. And here comes Andy Brass, St. Louis, Missouri, the Bigfoot driver. And Army, I'm going to tell you a little secret about Andy. He's got a nickname on the circuit. All the guys call him Squiggy. Squiggy. You know, nicknames kind of run with the Bigfoot crew. There, Jim Kramer, he is known as smooth on the tour. As Steve Combs comes out to go against the Bigfoot, Ford's a pair, Richard. All right, Steve is in the Night Stalker. He's out of Wisconsin. It's a 79 Ford. Of course, Bigfoot is the premier Ford. It's a 1988 Ford F-350. Ought to be a good race. Side by side, that lead. Now, keep an eye on Brad. Look, notice how smooth he is, Richard. A very smooth run. And a very dominating win for Andy Squiggy Brass and Bigfoot out of St. Louis. You saw George Smith, that, of course, the crew chief of the Bigfoot operation here in St. Paul. We're going to move on track side as Steve Combs takes Night Stalker back to the pits. Landy, the run looked awfully smooth that time. Looked like he had no problems whatsoever. Yeah, this is one of the easier runs. Uh, I just kind of took my time there a little bit. It felt, felt pretty good. It, you know, it stayed on the ground a little bit better, I think, this round. 
And we are about ready to kick off our quarterfinal round of competition. Coming out first will be the Terror Duster against USA One. And Army, when the cars get this smashed, is that good or bad for the competition? Well, the drivers really like them because they're not going to launch as high in the air. They're going to go further out, but not as high up. <laughs> I just had a great thought when you saw those tires on the track. I need a new set of tires for my car. I don't know if those <laughs> would fit, though. Okay, let's move along. It is the USA One Chevrolet Rod Lipsow taking on Terra Duster and Mark Wheeler. It's a 79 Plymouth against an 88 Chevrolet, and we're about ready to rock the halls of St. Paul. Plymouth will be working the right side, Chevrolet on the left side. Remember, a lot of pressure on this Chevrolet. Oh, what a leap. Look at that, Richard. Comes out. Oh, a little bit of a pop. You notice a little bit of a flame comes out of it, but the Chevrolet is going to advance. Rowdy Roddy Lipsow gets another win with USA 1. He'll move along. Meanwhile, Mark Wheeler, Terra Duster, a nice run, but not good enough this afternoon in St. Paul. He'll load it up and head back to Nebraska. We're going to load it up and head to the USA One Racing Shop where Army was earlier today. Well, ever 1988 was the first year a national champion was ever crowned in monster truck racing. Everybody around the country know that you and Chevrolet and that USA One took that championship. However, you're explaining to us that that was basically a research and development truck you learn a lot of things from that truck that you're going to be incorporating in a new truck. Could you explain a little bit about that to us? Well, you're right. The 1988 truck was totally new. There was so many things new in it. Uh, traditionally, over the years, you change one thing at a time. That was the first time I ever took and built a brand new truck, everything new in it. Uh, I'm very happy with the way it worked, needless to say. We just took the uh, basic chassis and suspension design. We're going to put the same basic chassis into this truck. We're just going to take some more of the sprung weight out of it and uh, hopefully make it go faster and, and uh, make the suspension work a little less. A lot of people are not aware that suspension is a very, very important part of these trucks. They think, well, these fellas are just taking, putting big tires on it, putting big shocks on it, and running over a bunch of cars. But really, there's a lot of chassis development in, involved in this sport. You fellas spend a tremendous amount of time making sure that the right weight is moved at the right angle. Can you explain that to us a little bit? Well, that's correct. First of all, you do want your weight distribution right. Uh, some of the people have gone to rear engines. Uh, we've stayed with the front engine. We feel that we want the weight uh, forward. But uh, the biggest thing is to get the suspension to work. And that means, uh, in the old days, we had, like you said, very heavy, all steel, welded together trucks and heavy springs that didn't move and no suspension. We, uh, we've got like 10 inches of travel in these things. Uh, we're looking at possibly a little more travel in the new one. Uh, the whole idea is when those trucks are flying through the air and landing, if you come down and land and bounce, you're not going to be making tracks towards the other, you know, towards the other end of the track. Your suspension has got to work so that your tires are in contact with the ground all the time, so that you're going straight ahead instead of bouncing around. Now, after listening to Everett Jasmer with you there, Army, earlier today, this is a highly complicated sport. Yeah, believe me, it's come a long way in a short time, and it's moving forward very, very rapidly. A lot of technology. Speaking of technology. On the right side, Awesome Kong, the narrow body truck. Dane sits in there, he's all smiling. On the left side, why sorry, Chevrolet's a pair. Notice the unique driving stance of the nightlife. Chevrolet's a pair, let's see what's going to happen back to you. And Dave Why Sorry says that's an early lead, but here comes the flying Texan. Steve Dane with another win and another opportunity for him to start slow and move fast. You know, in the past, Richard, this guy's kind of played possum. He said he was hurt and he wasn't. Tonight, I believe he definitely has a problem. We're going down trackside to check it. But I believe the transmission is hurt on his vehicle. And also, let's say congratulations to Dave Weissort, the driver of Nightlife, for a good race. But right now, Army's over with Steve Dane, the winner of this one. Right now, Steve, the transmission, we know it's not working right, but it's not getting worse, so you're still advancing. Yeah, I just called Jeff Dane. He's my brother. He owns it, builds it. He builds everything. An engine transmission, and it's a torque converter going. What's happening is slipping, and then it'll lock up so it's one to one. It's no, it's yay or nay. Either I'm going and hardly moving, or I give it throttle, and I got everything. I got it one to one. So either I, I'm trying to keep it at a moderate speed. If I give it too much throttle, I'm bonsai, so that's why I'm getting so much air. There is no in between with this transmission now. It's either yay or nay. You know, he was talking about his brother, Jeff Army. I know the entire Dane family here to see him. Will he win it? We'll find out with more power tracks in a moment. And welcome back to Power Tracks. Richard Lake and Army Armstrong. More quarterfinal round competition as we are ready for Mike Gresh and barely tame that 79 Ford out of Albany, Minnesota. He's going to be facing Jeff Zimmerman, the Madman Dodge from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Ought to be a pretty good race. Both these uh, trucks 
fairly matched up, Army. Yeah, they're they're pretty equal as far as horsepower, but both of these young drivers are trying to make a name for themselves, and this is how you're going to do it. They keep an eye on the flagman. That'll be Al Goss out of Louisville, Kentucky. He'll line them up. Ford against the Dodge Drive. Let's we'll see what's going to happen, Richard. They leave side by side. Ford comes on strong at mid-range and takes the win. Keep an eye on this kid. He's starting to make a name for himself. Mike Crash with the victory over Jeff Zimmerman. Interesting about Jeff, this is only the third race of his entire career, so he's a learner on this renegade circuit. But the winner, Mike Crash, Army has him track five. Well, looks like you really turned your luck around this afternoon. The truck looks super. You're doing a great job of driving it. Boy, everything's working real good, and I'm, it's just, I'm happy. I'm real happy. You going to make any changes at all, or you going to keep it the way it is? going to stay just the way it is. Good luck to you in that next round. Thank you. And then there were two in the quarterfinal round, and one of them, that awesome-looking machine, it is the master of disaster, Doug Spanier, the 26-year-old out of Albany, Minnesota. He's in an 89 Chevrolet, and he's taking on Squiggy. Here comes Andy Brass, Bigfoot, the 88 Ford. The old classic battle of Chevrolet versus Ford. Ford, the established truck, the established team of Bob Channer with Brass doing the driving. Chevrolet comes out, master disaster. New driver, new truck, new combination, trying to find the handle to make it work. He could really put some notches in his gun right now if he can nail Bigfoot on this run, Richard. And I'll tell you, if you ever get a chance to go buy his house, he collects model trains as a hobby. But right now, he's collecting another win in St. Paul Army. Speaking of trains, he came down through there like a fast-moving freight. The big blue Ford moves on eliminations. Andy Brass is looking good in St. Paul, Richard. Well, obviously, there's no doubt about it. Andy has found the right combination here in St. Paul. What do you think it is? Combination of Bigfoot. It's an established team. The truck makes horsepower. The kid is a not afraid to drive that truck. He's proven that. He's out to win this championship. And also a nice run there for Doug Spanier, master of disaster. Right now it's time for the Renegades TNT Question of the Week. And our Question of the Week about the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge Series comes to us from Albino Lebedo of Bernalillo, New Mexico. And Albino wants to know what type of fuel is used in the monster trucks. I have with me Doug Spanier. Doug is the driver, owner, and builder of the Master of Disaster. And first of all, Doug, what is the fuel y'all use to power these monsters? Uh, Cam 2 racing fuel, 114 octane. It's comparable to uh, aviation fuel with some additives. And how much typically in one evening's performance would you go through? On average, about 68 gallons. And how many gallons does the monster truck hold? 16. Well, Albino, as you can see, this fuel is used for speed and power, not for economy. And if you have a question of the week about the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge Series, you can send it to TNT Motorsports, 5515 Poplar Park Boulevard, Louisville, Kentucky, 40228. And if we use one of your questions on a future ESPN broadcast, we'll send you absolutely free a TNT Motorsports hat. And we are down to the final four in St. Paul. And when you're talking final four, you're usually talking cream of the crop. And that's what we've got. Steve Dane, the flying Texan, awesome Kong, We'll be taking on your defending Renegades national champion, Rowdy Roddy Litzow in USA 1. Richard, if the Texas truck's going to win, he's got to get him on the finish line. He will not be able to leave the starting line with him. The white Chevy, closest to the camera. He'll going to get a shot like a rocket. He's got to go hard, but the Texas truck's got to catch him on the other end. He's not going to do it. Not no down, boys, going to the final for the first time this year. Steve Dane could not do it this time. It looks like the Transmission got worse, Army. Definitely went away on him, Richard. A tough break for the kid out of the Lone Star State. Well, that 572 cubic inch Chevrolet engine of Rob Litzow, owned by Everett Jasmer, is going where they wanted to go into the championship round, and we're going to go trackside. Army's got the winner. Right now, Rob Litzow climbs out of the USA 1. Son, you're going to the finals in your own hometown. That's got to put a few butterflies in your stomach. Yeah, but it feels great. I tell you, you deserve to be there. We got a question about the cars you're going to be going over in that final. Number one, are you going to keep working that left lane? Yeah, I'm going to stay with it all night. I'm better getting lucky, and tonight I feel I'm going to stay right there. Okay, the cars in that lane are really pounded down, except in the middle. There's kind of a B there, the high point. Will that affect your driving style at all? Uh, not really. It's basically, the first set of cars is where the problem comes in. It's not too bad on this side. The second set and this last round is going to be mostly clearing them. So I ain't worried about that little hole in there. We wish you all the luck in the world. Good luck in that final, bud. Thanks. Well, when we come back with power tracks and TNT Motorsports, we're going to find out who's going to take on the USA Chevrolet. It will be a Ford, barely tame or Bigfoot. Stay tuned.
and welcome back to Power Tracks, where the monster mayhem continues. Our semi-final matchup to find out who's going to face USA 1 for the championship. It'll either be Mike Crash and Barely Tame, a 79 Ford from Minnesota, or Andy Squiggy Brass out of St. Louis with a legendary Bigfoot. Well, Mike is going to be tickled to death just to be where he is in elimination. He sits right next to the number one Ford truck in the country. The winner goes against the number one Chevrolet. It's going to be a classic battle. Al Goss brings him into the lane. He's going to stage them side by side. Winner goes for the number one spot representing the Ford camp in the Battle of the Monster Truck, Renegade style. And it's interesting, the owner of the barely tame truck is Doug Spanier, who is the driver and owner of Master of Disaster, which we've already seen run very well here in St. Paul. So keep your eye on barely tame, but it looks like all Bigfoot. Well, Andy Brass left like a rocket. Oh, uh, he's going to the final. It's going to be a dream final, Richard. Chevrolet versus Ford, USA 1 versus Bigfoot. But did you see Mike Crash and Barely Tame? Boy, what a finish he put on. He came on strong and barely lost this race. Yeah, this kid we're going to have to be keeping an eye on. He will be around in this sport for a long time to come. Well, are you ready to crown the king of monster mayhem? Here we go. This is it. As you said, the dream matchup for all of these fans. Minnesota's own Rod Litzow. It is a Chevrolet powered by Chevrolet. That is Rowdy Rod Litzow, USA 1, your defending national champion. And who did he beat for the championship, Army? He beat the big blue Ford that's going to be sitting on his right hip right now. And believe me, the Ford doesn't like it. He's going to be coming back after the Chevrolet. Remember, Bob Chandler brought this kid back from California to do one thing, beat that white Chevrolet truck. We're in the Chevrolet's hometown. The people are on their feet. The track announcer's got them pumped up. The final is on its way, Richard. Who are you going to go with? I gotta pick the Chevrolet. There's just vibrations in this building to say Chevrolet's gonna win and look at the lead. Oh, I almost said I'm gonna go with Ford. I'm glad I'm hitting now. Rod Lindsell has done it for the hometown folks. What a shot. Man, these people are pumped up in St. Paul and we're tickled to death for them. Well, you know, I'm glad you didn't let me have an opportunity to make a prediction. I thought Andy was running so well he'd win it all, but he didn't. Rod Lindsell won it. There he is with Army and the owner, Everett Jasper. Well, Richard, kind of a dream final here for a couple of hometown boys, or in your case, i got to say home state boy. First of all, I want to congratulate you. A super job of driving. I know it's been a pressure weekend, but I don't believe it gets any better than this. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Army, and it has been a little bit nervous. So I'm glad it's over, and I'm glad where I'm at. Well, Everett, congratulations to you. You built a super truck. You won a championship last year. I know you've been under pressure for a win in your hometown. Congratulations on a super job well done. Thank you very much, Army. We're off to a good start in 1989. You know, earlier we were talking to the fellows about the top trucks in 89. This is the third event. Everybody picked USA 1. They have a win. You all now. Bigfoot, they've got a win. An awesome console. It looks like 89 is going to be a great year on this Renegade Tour. It's going to be an extremely competitive year. Nothing like last year. Well, best of luck. We'll see you fellows on tour. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Army. So vindication tonight for Rod Litzow and USA 1, the defending Renegade PNT Monster Truck National Champion, finally wins one before... Join us next time for Power Tracks, the most powerful sport on earth. Brought to you by TNT Motorsports, the nation's leader in pulling and monster truck racing. <laughs>